Uh, so, as introduced, I'm Yuval. I'm a PhD student at the Gonda Brain Research Center in Bar Ilan. Uh, my advisor is Gal Chechik, and I will talk about zero shot learning. So, during the last years, uh, deep learning achieved great results in image related tasks. However, humans are still doing much better. Traditional machine learning models required many training examples, while humans can recognize objects without seeing any training examples. Let's take an example. Um, so you've probably never seen a jackalope in your life, and I'm telling you that a jackalope is a rabbit that has horns. Would you be able to tell which of the following images is a jackalope? Let's take a moment to tell which image is a jackalope. So, although you have never seen any examples of a jackalope, your brain was able to instantly build a prediction model that can recognize one. With the jackalope description, you were able to transfer your knowledge about basic semantic building blocks, for example, rabbit and horns, and build a prediction model for the new visual concept, the jackalope. So, this is the task of zero-shot learning, which is about recognizing new classes without observing any training examples for those classes. The only information available for the unseen test classes is a semantic description. So, in this example, the semantic description is a rabbit with horns. The zero-shot learning task builds a prediction model for new classes based on the semantic description. The model predicts a new class as a composition of basic elements. Here it's rabbit and horns. So, why is zero-shot learning important? When we build the image recognition model, we would like to classify millions of categories, but we simply cannot collect so much labeled data. So, zero-shot learning can address these challenges by learning new concepts from known basic elements. Also, this is an interesting AI question, since humans can learn about new concepts from text, like reading a Wikipedia article. So, more formally, on the training phase, we have a set of labeled samples, and each class is also accompanied with a semantics description. For example, a hoopa, sorry, a hoopo have striped wing, brown head, and long build. Hoopo is duchifat for Israelis. And with the semantic description, we can train a deep description prediction model. We use it as an intermediate representation that decomposes an image into its basic semantic building blocks. And the top part maps the predicted description to a class prediction. For that, it uses this class description provided by the raters. On test time, we get a set of image samples from unseen classes. Each class comes with a semantic description. For example, sorry, for example a morning warbler has olive green wing, gray blue head, and pink feet. Our goal is to predict the class for each image sample. And for that, we transfer the network that maps images uh, to intermediate description. So we just take the network we trained on and move it to the test space. <coughs> then we map the predicted description to test classes using the new class descriptions given by raters. Now, in our setup, uh, instead of natural language description, we have a set of predefined binary attribute. And for instance, in a data set of birds PC, the first attribute indicates whether or not a wing has a solid pattern uh, in a class or in an image. The second attribute is about stripes. And the last attribute describes various colors of a bird head. Okay. A class is described by the at <coughs> sorry, a class is described by attribute occurrence probability by averaging across raters. So here's rater number one, rater number two, etc. And the attribute occurrence probability is just their average. Um, I will talk shortly about one of the early methods which is simple and direct. So I will explain DAP, Direct Attribute Prediction, by Lampert, with a concrete example. For the semantic description, DAP takes a hard threshold, making the description binary. Either an attribute like gray head 
truly or falsely corresponds to a category. For the model, we start with the general zero-shot learning model. In depth, the intermediate description is based on attributes. The description model indicates how likely each attribute is seen in an image. Finally, that predict classes by a flat product of attribute prediction scores corresponding to binary description. So it looks a bit complex, but I'll break it down. So for example, when predicting a morning warbler, a class that its description has a solid wing, but no stripe. You see that the soling has one and the stripes has zero. So for the soling wing, for the soling wing attribute, we take the prediction probability as is. For the striped wing attribute, we take one minus the prediction probability because its description for the warbler is false. And uh, for the other attributes, we just continue as is. So now the trick is, <coughs> sorry, the trick in zero-shot learning with attributes is how to map attribute combinations to classes. And one way is to take a flat approach like we've seen in DAP, which treats all attributes equally. But such models <coughs> ignore complex interactions between attributes, because attributes has non-trivial interactions and logical relations. For example, the color of, of petals may be orange or violet, but rarely both. Or the size of a bird is often not indicative of its color. On the other hand, we can learn a rich model that accounts for complex interactions of attributes and classes. However, the space of attribute combinations is exponentially large, and fitting such a complex model requires a lot of training data, which is usually not available. We take an intermediate approach. We impose a simple two-layer structure that is natural for this type of data, and it's also easy to learn. And let me first uh, explain what is the key idea, and then I will explain why, it's, why it is natural for this type of data. So we suggest an approach that imposes a structure that captures and or logical relations among groups of attributes. And our approach has two stages. In the first stage, we aggregate attributes into OR groups. Each group evaluates a soft OR, which is a weighted sum, within its groups. So for instance, olive wing or green wing. In the second stage, we use the soft AND, as a product of probabilities, to compose a category from its group. So, for example, a category would correspond to olive wing or green wing and gray head or blue head, each one of these parentheses is a group, and pink feet. And the idea behind our approach is that we would like to constrain the model in a manner that agrees with the data. Now, the question is, what kind of assumptions on the distribution of the data would be natural for the model? And many times, this is the challenge for machine learning, choosing a family of models that has the right inductive bias, which is not too simple, which can underfit the data, but not too general, which can overfit. So let's look again on the attributes. And we observe how attributes tend to cluster into semantically related groups, like solid wing or striped wing. They describe a pattern of a wing. And gray head or orange head, they describe the head color. Um, a second observation we make is that the perceptual property may be mapped to several semantically similar, ambiguous choices of attributes. And this may be caused by several factors. Uh, and I'm going to show you some for examples. So uh, it can be due to Rater's disagreement. And here, some writers say the wings are olive, while others say the wings are green. It can also be due to class within class variability. Like here, sometimes the Roadrunner looks puffy, but other times it looks slim. Uh, it can also be due to point of view, which makes the main color uh, in this class appear as brown or white, depending on the point of view. Now, Notice that when we focused on a specific property, like the main color or the shape, we took an or logical expression between the similar choices to describe the ambiguity. 
as, in, as we did here in brown or white, or in the previous as lean or puffy. So this brings us back to the key idea, because in such cases, it is natural to model attribute structure as a soft or over attributes, olive or green in a group, which is here its wing color. It is also natural to apply a soft end relation across group, since a class is often recognized by a set of necessary properties. So I'm going to describe our method, uh, LAGO, which is learning attribute groups for zero short learning. And we see here an overview of our deep model. In a first class glance, it looks complex, but in fact, it's quite simple. So let's just break it into pieces. So the first part is just mapping an image to attribute predictions as we did in DAP. Okay, so this gives us the description. On the second part, attributes are gathered uh, to groups. We know them as AK. And each attribute evaluates a soft OR by using a weighted sum within uh, the attributes. The last part, we use a soft end as a product of probabilities to compose its category from its groups. In the equation that describes our model, we can see a weighted sum for attributes in each group AK. Each attribute has a weight, uh, the orange part, and a prediction score coming from the image. The all weights are driven from the semantic description metric we saw uh, some slides ago, and we do it in a Bayesian manner. And we learn to estimate the attribute scores from the training data. To illustrate it better, let's look at a concrete example. So we start with the following description. The morning wobbler has an olive green wig, a gray blue head, and pink feet. This can be represented as the following hard logical expression. Olive wing or green wing, to resolve the disambiguity, and gray head or blue head, and pink foot or pink feet. Finally, our model takes a softer approach, replacing the hard OR by a weighted sum, and the hard end by a product of probabilities. And you can also note that the soft model accounts for a red wing, although a red wing does not correspond to the class in this example. The soft OR accounts for the red wing by assigning a zero weight for that irrelevant attribute. Finally, we can also learn the groups from data with a soft term for group membership, which becomes a model parameter. When semantic groups are given, as the hard case we just seen, it is initialized to 0 or 1. And if we like, we can fine tune its value during training. We tested LAGO on three zero shot learning benchmark datasets. The first is CAB, it's a fine grained bird species dataset. It has 200 bird categories, 300 attributes, and 28 groups. Attributes are like blue wing, olive wing, spotted breast, striped breast. And given groups correspond to an is-a relationship. So for instance, a blue wing is a wing color. A spotted breast is a breast pattern. Similarly, uh, animals with attributes, AWA, is a data set of animals, mostly mammals. It has 50 animals categories, 85 attributes, and nine groups. Here also uh, attributes are like furry, tough skin, bulbous, small, which is, and also has the is a relationship, like furry is a texture and small is a shape. Or bulbous is a shape. The last data set is Sun. Uh, it's a visual scene data set. It has 700 scene types, 100 attributes, and four groups that are very, very coarse. And we will see that soon in the experiment. In the first experiment, we did not use the knowledge about semantic grouping, but instead we learned the groups from data. The parameter of groups, we, since we don't know how many groups are there, the number of groups is a hyperparameter, we call it K. 
and we use cross-validation to select the optimal number of groups, k. And we observe that LAGO successfully learns group assignments from data. In the second experiment, we compared what happens once we add the knowledge about semantic groups of attributes, groups like color, shape, texture. And we tested four variants of LAGO. So in the pink bar, we're using the knowledge about semantic groups of attributes, like texture, color, and shape. And in the brown bar, we learn the groups from data. So we choose k as the same number of semantic groups as in the pink bar. And what this means is that when we compare the brown bar to the pink bar, this shows that domain knowledge about attributes grouping, like texture or shape, can contain uh, valuable information, sorry, it contains a valuable signal. In the blue bar, we make the same experiments as the pink bar with the semantic groups, except that we allow to fine tune the semantic group assignment during training. Comparing the blue bar to the pink bar and the brown bar show that LAGO effectively exploits domain knowledge about attribute grouping. The last LAGO variant in gray learns the groups from data with k as the best number of groups. This is the result from the first experiment, this one. And again, this shows that LAGO succeeds even when no prior group information is given, effectively learning group assignments from data. So we repeat these experiments for Cab and Shan and, it, and sorry and Sun and it shows similar results. Where Sun experiments show that LAGO uh, is useful even when the semantic knowledge about grouping is of low quality because, as we said, it has four very coarse groups and a hundred attributes. Finally, we also use the validation set to choose the best model variant. And we tested LAGO on the test set. So I'll just say it again. All the experiments we've just seen were on the validation set. And we do model selection, and we just choose for each data set which one is the best. And then we try it on the test set. So for CAB, it's the fine-tuned semantic. Same, it's for animals with attributes. And for uh, SUN, it's the learned uh, groups with the best K. And we see that LAGO outperforms previous baseline on CAB and AWA by a significant margin. And on SUN, LAGO losses by a small margin. So summary, let's sum it up. Uh, LAGO is a probabilistic zero-shot learning model. It captures natural, soft, and or logical relations among groups of attributes. It can learn grouping structure from data. And it can also incorporate prior domain knowledge about grouping when it's available. Uh, LAGO achieves new state-of-the-art accuracy on CAB, AWA, and I accuracy on SUN, uh, paper and code. And uh, thank you.